you mentioned about writing and that's obviously what we're going to talk a little bit about and how now is a very good time to be writing so what what's the process of coming up with it with an idea for a nature book you know for example you did a book on wrens which maybe isn't the first bird people would think to write a whole book about but like what what's the process yeah well actually the first book i did in that series was the robin which i suppose was the obvious one and i did it for christmas and it did extremely well um it's still you know paying for some of mrs moss's birthday presents and things because it, <laughs> it, 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 it earned royalties which was lovely and more more than that i got lovely reviews of those books most books you get reviewed on Amazon are reviewed by people who are serious naturalists or birders, some of whom I know, and I'm, I'm very pleased to get those. What was lovely about The Robin is I got reviews saying things like, I bought this for my mum and she really loved it, which means a lot to me because it means it's reaching what I would call normal people as opposed to people <laughs> like you and me. No, I think um, that's fair. I think that's very fair. <laughs> and I do write my books for a general audience mostly. Um, it does vary, but though, particularly those books. Um, so yeah, that then led to the wren, and that was, you're right, it's not a bird you'd immediately think of, but of course it is Britain's commonest bird. It's a bird that I was intrigued by, and I was delighted when I did write the book, because I learned so much. With a robin, I learned a fair amount, because you do, but I learned, I sort of knew what I didn't know about the robin, or I wasn't quite sure why it did things in a certain way. With the wren, it was like, really? It does what? You know, and they are amazing birds. And I've just done the third one in that series, is the swallow, uh, ah, which I delivered a week or so ago, um, which is why I have been quite busy recently. And that will come out in the autumn. Um, and that, that was a real delight to, to write because swallows are just such an amazing bird. So, so what's your process with picking? I mean, you say so. The robin's obviously an easy, um, an easy one because obviously people have it, see them at Christmas and whatnot. But what made you pick a, a wren? What made you pick a, a swallow, even to a degree? Well, in in order, the robin was because David Lindo, who you know, had, had come up with Britain's favourite bird. Yes. Um, the robin so and it had won that and i thought that's a good one to do and it fits with christmas then the publisher said oh that's great it's done really well what else would you do and i said i want to do the wren because when i say to people it's britain's commonest bird they say really i've never seen one so i play them the sound and they go oh yeah i've heard that and i say well they're all over the place they might you know i saw two this morning but you have to be focused with robins they come up to you and they sit on this spade and they all that and swallows are of course very visible particularly now they're just back and you know people, if you live in the country you see swallows if you live in the city you see swifts and house martins but those birds because they're flying all the time um so the wren was very intriguing and then i wanted to do something different i didn't want to do another garden bird and the swallow was perfect because of course it's got the whole story of well the the joke i've said in the book is you say to people where do swallows go in the winter and they say, well, they go to Africa for the winter. And you go, aha, but they don't, do they? They go to Africa for the spring and summer. It's just, it's not our spring and summer. So <laughs> yeah, I suppose people don't think of that. Yeah, when I went there, of course, it was, it was summer. It was January, it was summer there. And I talked to the people I met and said, do you, do you, you know, is this a sign of spring for you? And they said, oh, yeah, you know, when the barn swallows come, as they call them, because they've got other species. Um, and they're everywhere in Africa. I mean, I saw a roost of three million of them, which was amazing. Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, how, how I come up with book ideas, I suppose I write about something I think I am interested in, and so I hope that other people would be. It's a great David Attenborough line. When Attenborough was controller of BBC Two, he said, I put on programmes that I thought I might want to watch. <laughs> and I think, you know, that's a really important thing, that you, if you're a writer, you have to write about something you care about, and with a bit of luck, you can make other people care about it as well. Well, I I'm think you... my dog is barking and driving me mad. I'm just going to go. Oh, and... That's okay. <laughs> can you stop her barking? Because I'm doing a podcast and it's not working very well. The dog has never had so many walks in her life. Uh, yeah, no, my, mine, uh, my, mine bur I was doing one of these the other day and she burst in the room and started jumping all over me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm used to all, all Less of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, um, you know, bird uh, name, you know, ideas come from everywhere. The, the book I wrote most recently that came out last month, um, it's called The Accidental Countryside. And the subtitle gives you a clue. It's called Hidden Havens for Britain's Wildlife. But the point about that book is that that came out of a programme I did about 12, 13 years ago now with Alan Titchmarsh, where we did all the different habitats in Britain. 
and we did farmland and we did woodland and we did wetlands and the coast and then we done urban and then I said look there aren't eight habitats we're doing eight programs not eight habitats and I said there's a habitat I'm really interested in it's not really a habitat and I called it at the time secret Britain and the definition of it is places that human beings have over time built for ourselves that the wildlife moves into so it starts with Musa Brock on Shetland which is an old um, Iron Age structure that the storm petrels nest in and it moves on through churchyards and stately homes and railways and roadside verges and golf courses and military sites and basically it's places that the wildlife you know finds that basically were not designed for wildlife effectively although in the book about half the places in the book are now designed for wildlife because they tend to be old gravel pits and quarries which as you know are have been have been created now as nature reserves but they weren't created for that purpose. that wasn't the original purpose no 